this week's going to be a busy one. We are working on the brick overhang on the gables. I'm going to get around to starting that this afternoon. But before I can do that, there's voids behind the brick wall that we've built up on top of the stone. That all needs filling in with concrete. So I've just gone and mixed up a batch. We're also going to do the same thing that we did on the front overhangs last week. And Victoria is going to fill the back end of those bricks with some concrete to help weigh them down some more. Keegan, I love this comment I just read. It says something about what is with this guy? He always dresses for winter on top and summer on the bottom. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, there's a simple answer for that. And, you know, although it's normally nice and sunny in Portugal in the winter, it still gets pretty cold when we're out working in the morning. So we obviously start work early, it's cold. So I come out dressed up as it gets warmer throughout the day, shed a layer or two. But I can't really do that on the bottom half. Mm -hmm. So, you know, shorts it is. You know, maybe I'll have to get some like magic mic trousers that I can just whip <laughs> off when it gets to like mid morning or, yeah, I don't know. Maybe you're, maybe you're wanting to see me make videos in my pants. on that side is looking so nice and bright especially with this morning sun on it so we're going to give this side the same treatment because we want to obviously get it raked out before we start laying that fresh brickwork for the overhang so time to fire up the jenny so we can start chiseling This side is taking so much longer than we thought it was going to. Obviously it's a bigger side, this side. The other gable we did last week, it's got a big mound covering kind of about three foot of the wall. So we've obviously got that extra bit, plus there's a lot more concrete on here smeared all over the faces and it is being incredibly stubborn. It's a good job I've got some good hip mobility because I was pulling some seriously deep squats to get those low bits. <laughs> need a tea break after this morning's work so while I take a load off let me talk to you about June's Journey who are the sponsor of today's video. So June's Journey is a free to download hidden object game combined with a murder mystery detective story and it all takes place on an island in the glamorous 1920s. As June tries to uncover the truth about her sister's murder you work your way through scenes finding objects meeting characters and uncovering clues to help crack the case. I'm not someone who usually plays mobile games 
challenge, but I've really gotten into playing the hidden object challenges. I like that you need to focus and engage your brain while you're trying to find peculiar items. As well as trying to solve the mystery, you can have fun remodeling and customizing your mansion and gardens to earn flowers and unlock new chapters. I also love the aesthetic of the game. It's full of period details and the scenes are really colourful. I've been playing a lot when I've been on little breaks like this because the game's really easy to get into and just pick up where you left off. So download June's Journey for free by clicking our link in the description below or by scanning the QR code on the screen. It's available on iOS and Android devices or on your PC with Facebook games. In all honesty, I don't know if it's going to be a bit too warm to do this. This stuff is going off quickly, but we've got a couple of hours left for the day, so I'm going to press on and try and get as much of this gable overhang done as possible. I'm going to carry on tomorrow, so we'll just see where we get to by COB. Is that close of business in office terms? Yeah, these ones are a bit different from the front, so we don't actually have to put any weight on these, whereas the ones on the front are taking the load of the kind of tiles at the eve, the first row of tiles. These aren't taking any load. The tile is supported by these tar battens. All we really need these to take the load off is the render. It's a bit trickier than the front, if I'm being honest, because I'm going to wedge it into this gap between the tar batten and the bricks, which is a little tricky because it just wants to push all the mortar out in the process. But we're getting there. It's working, which is good news. And yeah, we've come up slightly short from the edge of the tile with these because we're obviously going to render over this and come up to the edge of the tiles. Render all in between the tile edges so this will all look nice and smooth. One clean piece, shall we call it? Mm -hmm. Rendering this seems like a mile away right now. So yeah, going to press on, try and get as many of these done as possible. been a wild few days here. We have had some crazy gale force winds pretty much for two days straight. And if you can see these big old bags under my eyes, it was absolutely howling all through the night last night. So I barely slept a wink. Good news though, is that the tiny house roof has been put under some serious stress. No tiles have come off, everything is still standing. So that's good. <laughs> We're expecting more super strong winds within the next few hours though, this afternoon. So with that in mind, I'm not gonna be getting up on kind of extended scaffold on the building to be working on the overhang because it's just not worth the risk. So gonna stay with our feet firmly on the ground and I'm gonna help Victoria with a job that we've been kind of putting off for a little while, but seems like the perfect time to do it. Look at this slacker. Hey, it's work day, what are you doing? <laughs> Just having a little swing before the work starts. All play, no work. <laughs> I see no problem in that. <laughs> see, this swing's still quite high for you. How are you gonna stop? I don't know, you're here now. You can maybe, <laughs> you could be in my crash landing, Matt. I'm waiting for a dismount. Okay, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. It's been a minute since we've actually shown you down at the veg patch and at the moment we're really not growing very much. I have had some pea shoots in this bed and they were really nice. I mean, don't look now, there's not really anything to see. <laughs> I've chopped them back, but we will definitely will be planting some more of those because I think we both really enjoyed them. Agree? See. <laughs> but part of the reason that we aren't growing too much is because we actually want to relocate and expand the veg garden.
said if you saw a couple of videos ago where Victoria was planting seed potatoes that's actually the area that we're going to move everything to so one of the main reasons is that we want to have more kind of in-ground beds the soil over on that part of the land is really fertile it's nice and flat so we can plant more stuff there also where we have the raised beds now if you saw us when we put the greenhouse in and the beds we're on a bit of a slope so we're actually having to dig out quite a lot to put those beds and the greenhouse there and we thought it was the right decision at the time but kind of on reflection the flatter area would have probably been better so we're going to leave the greenhouse where it is but we're going to move the beds over into that area as well it's not too far from where the greenhouse currently is and if we can just put all the kind of raised beds and the in-ground beds together it's going to make things easier to water also we found last summer that the area we've currently got the beds just gets a bit too much sun exposure it gets very hot in the summer so if we put it over on that side it's got a few more trees closer by and it's a little bit more shielded so I've just worked around with the lawnmower just to try and prepare the area a little bit before we bring across the raised beds. And as I was happily mowing along, I just clocked, we've actually still got a little bit of almond blossom <laughs> hanging on, <laughs> despite these winds that we've, uh, well, we're currently having, and also we've had the last few days. I was so surprised it's managed to just hold on. Does it cause you as much pain as it does me to be undoing all this work we did? Uh, mixed emotions. <laughs> it's got to get a little bit worse before it gets better, I think. Mm -hmm. Ready? Straight up. Yeah. Bend yeah. your knees. That's fine. Straight back. <laughs> Too easy. <laughs> opportunity for pruning up the fruit trees is definitely closing we're still in winter technically but it's definitely got the feel of early spring so I'm gonna tackle a pear tree and I actually want to use the off cuttings in the garden straight away Started, I hadn't actually realised what a sorry state that tree was in because a lot of the material I've taken off was actually dead or dying on the tree so yeah not good for the tree but actually that is ideal for what I want to use the cuttings for. to fill up 
these raised beds and I'm going to use the hugel culture. I never know if I'm pronouncing that right, but I'm just going to go with it. Hugel culture method to fill up the bed. So it's basically using layers of logs, sticks, twigs, leaves, soil, and then compost to fill the bed up. I've not done it before, as you can probably tell, but apparently it has got the benefit of water retention. So it improves the raised bed's ability to keep the soil moist, which obviously in our climate is going to be a really helpful thing. Now these beds are only, if I remember correctly, about 18 inches tall. So once those logs are in, there's not actually going to be masses and masses of soil and compost to plant into. My plan is just to have shallow rooted things in the raised bed. So the initial soil depth shouldn't pose any problem at all for those ones. With the beds not being that deep, I'm not going to use enormous logs, but I think this one should do the trick. So I've just made some wood chips and that's going to go into my huga culture beds in a minute. But these ones I just wanted to show you, I've made from some of our fig cuttings and they literally smell like fresh fig. Absolutely delicious. It's almost a shame that I'm going to be burying them in the beds. <laughs> believe how much material these beds are taking I've managed to pack in absolutely loads of our cuttings and also lots of the dead wood that we've got lying around the property and there's still masses masses more room so I've got those chips that have gone in between the gaps and I need to give it a good water in before I put on the next layer of the lasagna as we're calling it I wanted to make sure that the nitrogen levels were going to be all right so I am going to include some of the broom from around the land of which we have plenty because I I read that that's actually a nitrogen fixer. It's going to take a lot of work to try and get this new growing area set up but I'm really pleased that we have made the call to do the shift because the first area just wasn't right, it just wasn't working and we were having failure after failure and there's just no point keep banging your head against the brick wall I think and you've just sometimes got to admit that you've just picked the wrong spot and bite the bullet and do the work to shift it. It's going to be a phased move but I feel like we're on the right track and I'm also feeling really excited excited about trying a few different bed options, both the in-ground and then also hygge culture as well for the first time. died down, safe to go on the scaffold again, and I'm back on the overhangs on the gables today. I've just carried on from where I left off the other day, and I've kind of got to a point now where all that's left to do is kind of the apex. Haven't completely figured out what I'm gonna do here. <laughs> I think I'm just gonna kind of roughly work out two bricks to go in, cut an angle to get them as close together as possible. So I think as long as I can do something that resembles a point, it'll be fine. Okay, so that's the apex done on this side. The actual point is a bit loosey-goosey on the bricks, but it's okay because when we render it, that's when we get it really nice and sharp. So now I need to start all over again on the opposite side. I'm just gonna grab Victoria, get her to help me move the scaffolding, and then yeah, back to square one. There are 
lots of positives to the new site that we've picked for the growing area, but one negative is that this side isn't actually connected to the side where we've currently got the greenhouse. It's not actually that far away from here, but there is a little stone wall that divides the two sides. So I'll try and orientate you. So this is our new site, and then if you pan all the way around here, you've got the little wall that runs in the middle, and then there is our greenhouse. So my plan is to remove part of the wall and I think this is going to be the section. The reason I'm prioritising connecting the two sides right now is because I want to use some of the best quality soil that we had in the beds originally, which is currently still by the greenhouse, and take it into the new beds. And the only way I can do that currently would be to bucket it one at a time. And obviously I don't want to do that because that's just ludicrous. So I want to make a ramp so that I can wheelbarrow it across. a hibernating snake but it was just a big worm just found this little guy Ooh, he's a bit drowsy so I think he might have just been hibernating so I'll go find another little space for you he's so small got a stubborn one. This is absolutely massive. I've just stabbed it with the fork and I can hear it goes all the way back there. So there's no chance I'm getting it out. We might be able to chip this corner off if necessary, but I think we should be able to just graduate it down. Not the permanent solution, but a decent one for now. So that is garden relocation phase one complete. Tick. I've topped off the beds with the soil that was of a good quality from the original site, then some compost, and then a final layer of slightly stinky horse compost manure. And I'm gonna leave it for a few days before I bother doing anything else because I feel like it needs to settle down. So I'm gonna give it a final water and then call it a day. So it's a beautiful winter's morning today. The sun is out, which is lovely. Victoria's currently breaking down a load of bricks and filling the back of them. So while she's being a trooper and getting on with that, I need to pick up on this gable where I left off yesterday and get this finished before I can move on to the back. Now I'm reluctant to say in videos now, today I'm gonna get all this finished because I always say that optimistically and it never pans out. So I'm gonna say my intention is to finish it all, but I'm not gonna make any promises. <laughs> is not going as quickly as I would like to. I had to jump down because it started raining, which was completely unexpected and obviously turned the camera off. But yeah, I'm about halfway 
I kind of forgot that the majority of this backside hadn't had behind the bricks filled in with kind of mortar and broken brick tile etc just to fill that void so I'm having to do that simultaneously as I lay the bricks which is obviously consuming a lot of the mortar that I've got so Victoria's just run up she's gonna make me another batch hopefully I can get this finished today because I'm desperate to get these final tiles on but obviously I need these overhangs to have a bit of time for the mortar to go off and harden properly before I do that so really need to get it done today because we've got plenty of rain on the horizon for the coming days so Let's keep on working away. Oh, I'm so close to getting this done, but I'm completely out of mortar. Victoria's called me in a bit of a panic. She can't seem to get the mix right, so I'm gonna go and lend a helping hand. How's it going? Is it just too wet? Much too wet. Can you see it all over my face? <laughs> you look so defeated. I am. <laughs> Come on, we can do it. Oh, I'm just in the nick of time. Finito. Oh, where are you? There you are. There's obviously still a few tiny spots left to do where the gable meets the front. I could foresee if I put something in, it would have ended up causing a problem when I came to do the back. So I'll fill those few bricks in next time. But for the first time in ages, we can't really see the insulation anymore. We can't see the membrane anymore. It's actually looking relatively normal. <laughs> <laughs> Normals never look so good. 